the total vegetarian next to B12 has to understand the calcium situation. The bones need calcium. Now, the vitamin D controls the calcium absorption. If you have adequate vitamin D blood levels, you will absorb possibly three times more calcium. So that's important to know. And more important, if you cut your salt intake in half, it would be like having a 900 milligram pill of calcium because of the way it works on your kidneys. The kidneys would uh, lose less calcium and would reabsorb more if you have less salt in the diet. So I think that salt thing is very important, but it's difficult to cut down your salt because they put it in almost everything you buy in the store, okay? The other thing is that you have these uh, oxalic acids and phytic acids which uh, combine with the calcium to make an insoluble salt so you can't absorb the calcium. Now, there are ways to lower that, but there are foods that have less, like the bok choy. The Chinese cabbage is very good. It has less of that. And you can get rid of the, some of that phytic acid, but the phytic acid does us some good in lowering our risk of cancer. So it's not necessary that we avoid all the foods that have phytic acid in. But we do need to get calcium. Now, the Epic Oxford study in England showed that the total vegetarians who didn't use milk or eggs had 37% more fractures of the bones. But if they got 525 milligrams of calcium a day, they had no increase in fracture risk. So how much do you get in calcium in your diet if you don't use any dairy products? In Poland, they did studies on this, and they came up with a figure 250 milligrams. But if you need 525, that means you need one quarter of a liter of some milk substitute that's been fortified with calcium, like most of them are. A soy milk substitute, almond milk, rice milk, they usually add the same amount that cow's milk has, so that would give you another 300 milligram. So one quarter of a liter of a milk substitute fortified with calcium plus the 250 you get already from the food you eat, that would bring you up to the level above what causes fractures, so you wouldn't have any excess fracture risk. The other right reason we need calcium is, besides the bone problem, we need calcium to decrease the risk of certain kinds of ca cancers. Uh, too much calcium increases prostate cancer. Uh, too little cancer might increase the risk of intestinal cancer, particularly rectal cancer. So how much should we get? I recommend men get no more than one lit quarter of a liter of milk a day because otherwise they'd get too much calcium to increase their prostate cancer risk. 40% of American women are taking calcium substitutes in order to try to avoid osteoporosis. I think this is a little dangerous. There's some evidence this increases the heart attack risk. So it would be better to get it in a natural way by making sure you get adequate sunshine, get your blood levels of vitamin D up good so you absorb more, and cut your salt intake out so you work on the kidneys so the kidneys don't excrete so much calcium and reabsorb more calcium. And then avoid the foods that have too much oxalic acid and phytic acid. Uh, use more bok choy. Now, there are, is calcium in foods like orange juice, almonds have it. There's quite a thing, few things that have it. Hemp milk has a lot more than even cow's milk, but not commonly found in most stores, hemp milk. But it is very high in calcium. But you need to get adequate cal calcium to at least avoid uh, the fracture of the bone. Calcium in in the milk helps to lower the risk of hypertension. But soy milk fortified with calcium does it even better. So you don't have to have calcium from cow's milk. You can get it in another way. The US government 
has recommended high amounts of calcium. They recommend 1,000 milligrams for adult people to get it every day. Well, on that basis, you'd have to drink three cups of milk a day. But the, the reason they said you need this much is their studies on balance. How much goes in should equal what goes out. They had a balance study which showed 1,000 milligrams of what you need. But th you can get balance at any level. Dr. Hegstead that taught me in nutrition at Harvard, he said that's no way to tell how much you need. So I think they are in error in using that as a method to tell how much we need. A better method is to go around the world, see how people eat, and see if they're growing okay and their bones are okay. That's better. And we don't have people getting too much calcium, there'd be a solid cement block. If they're getting too little, the bones would break up and they'll blow away. Neither is happening. So most people are getting enough calcium. But with the total vegetarian who does not use milk or eggs, we should try to in ensure that we don't have any adverse reaction because of too little calcium. Another question that comes in regarding the calcium. The scientists used to say that if you get more protein, it would pull the calcium from the bones, and therefore that was bad. But in the years 200, 2004 and 2005, they did studies and found out more protein actually deposited more calcium in the bones. Where did they get the extra part that they could excrete more at the same time? They got it because they were absorbing more calcium. So they had more that they could ex excrete. So now we don't say that anymore, that high protein uh, uh, harms the bones by taking calcium out of the bones.